Are you tired of your vehicle's one wheel pill burnouts? Do your friends often tease you about your one leggy peggies? Hi, my name is Blake Kane, and if you're tired of only lighting one tire fires, listen closely to the following message. Okay, so today we're going to be working on this 1978 Toyota pickup. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be welding the rear differential, basically to simulate having a spool in it. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and lift the rear end up and support it under some jack stands. I always like to go right here where the leaf spring perch is with my jack stands. The first thing I'm going to get started with is not judging me for my super sketchy block situation. And uh, we're going to move on to these four axle nuts there's one two three four and those hold the axle in place and once we take those loose we're actually going to slide the axle out trucks anything like mine that's seen 40 years of abuse and neglect so i'm just going to go ahead and hit these with a little uh, penetrating oil to try to give us a little better shot at getting them out all four of these are going to be a 17 millimeter uh, socket or wrench and uh, i've broke this one loose you can see I got a couple wrenches here because these other ones were extremely tight. And one trick you can do is uh, you know, double up your wrenches. Just be careful you don't smash your knuckle against the leaf spring here. When it breaks loose. The next thing we're going to do now that we got those all stacked up right here where they're easy to lose is um, this brake line coming in. We're going to take that off. Now, I will say that with removing this line, it's, it may seem obvious to some, but maybe not to everyone. Removing this line is going to put air in the system, so we're going to have to make sure we're able to bleed the brakes afterwards. So what I'm going to do before I take that line off is I'm going to go ahead and come up here and crack this bleeder screw and make sure that it opens up properly. And it does so it moves fine uh, sometimes they'll be seized up sometimes they'll actually break off trying to remove them that's something you want to find out before you uh you want to make sure you're able to bleed your brakes before you take that line off because if not you'll have air in your system and no way to get it out on mine that was a eight millimeter wrench for that bleeder screw the next thing we're going to do we're going to do from outside the vehicle we're going to actually just grab this tire and pull it out and it should only need to come out about uh, probably eight inches or so and it should come out fairly easy if it doesn't come out easy you could uh, take a rubber hammer or a dead blow and kind of tap the back side of the uh, tire but mine's going to come out pretty easy and you're going to feel that uh, part of that axle and bearing come off right there just like that from the inside this is what that's going to look like. You're just going to have your axle shaft hanging out of the end of your rear end right there. All right, now that you got this side all completed, I'm going to make the exact same process for the other side. Uh, those four axle nuts, the brake line, and then just slide your axle out like that. All right, the next thing we're going to do, now that we got this side uh, pulled out, is we're going to go underneath the vehicle all right then from underneath the vehicle we're going to take a uh, either a 24 millimeter or 15 16 so we're going to check that this fill plug will actually come off yeah it will well the reason you check for the fill plug is because if you if your fill plug strips out or you can't get it off or whatever and you really wouldn't want to drain the fluid you'd want to stop and you know i guess reassess the situation and see if welding your differential is actually what you need to be working on but now that we know that we can fill it back up we're going to go ahead and move out of the way and take the same 15 16 or 24 millimeter whichever one and loosen up this uh drain plug and we'll put a catch can right here and drain all this fluid out of here 
And on this um, drain plug, there's this raised lip around it to protect it from, I guess, rocks or whatever. That thing is just packed full of this old nasty, greasy crap. So I'm just going to take my knife and kind of dig that out of there so my sock will actually fit down on it. Here's that um, groove I was telling you about. And if you notice on mine, there's a nick in it right here where I guess I probably bottomed out on something and it <clears throat> has mashed the steel ring in too close and my socket won't fit on there. So before I can do anything, I'm actually have to take and probably get a uh, little chisel or screwdriver and, and get that out of there. Be right back. Gotta go get a bigger stick. Alright, so I underestimated the uh how tight that was gonna be, so I just stepped up to a half inch drive ratchet and I got my favorite cheater bar right here. I'm just gonna slip that right on there. I don't know if that was that breaking loose or that was my ratchet break it. Well, that ratchet's fine, so it either broke loose or just slipped off. Let's hope for the first one. Oh yeah. Now, I know that they call this the rear end, and if you had smell of vision right now, you'd know why, because this right here is gonna stink. Old nasty gear will always stink like that. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is move on around to the front side of the front side of the rear end, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna take our drive shaft bolts out. It's gonna be four around here, and they're all twelve millimeter. Before we take this last one out, you shouldn't have to worry about it, but just as a safety precaution, you probably don't want to be laying with your face directly underneath this like i am right now in case that thing drops it's got a lip that holds it in there i'll show you whenever we pull it out all right so now we're actually going to pry this forward a little bit because it's it's almost got like a little lip that sits down in there you'll see it when we get to taking it off there should be just barely enough slack in your uh, in the slip joint that's right up here by your carrier bearing in order to get this off. So I'm just going to try to just pull it. I'm going to try pulling with a screwdriver like this and then also tapping right here and see if maybe that combination will get us, get us what we need. It's just a little stuck in there. Now that we got that groove in there, we should actually be able to just like that. All right, so if you just look at the end of this drive shaft, you see it's got this raised cone portion all the way around it. And that actually fits into this hole on the drive flange right there so that's why i was having to kind of tap it to get it out because it just got in there and got seized up on the drive shaft there's no need to remove it all the way i just took mine and just rested it up here on the frame rail and i had this kind of like long bread tie type material and i just tied it up there's a little extra safety all right so maybe this next part won't be as bad for you but my truck had a bad transmission seal and it's had it as long as I've had the truck, I've just kept it topped off. And in doing such, it has just left this thing covered in grease and all these bolts right here. You can't even see the heads on because they're so covered up in grease. But the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and take off these bolts around here. And it's looking like it's going to be tw uh, 10, 10, 12 mil millimeter bolts all the way around right here. I'm hoping my little quarter inch impact will bust them off. And this is a little bit of a pro tip right here. I didn't clean these up any so there's all that nasty crap on there and it's got my nut jammed into my socket. 
you can thread it on there or you can take one of these drive shaft bolts out and thread into it and then just thread it in there just a little bit and then just pull right out there's all that nasty crap that's got it hung in there so before i go any further i'm just going to go ahead and take a few minutes with a wire brush and clean all these up hit them with a little penetrating oil so hopefully this goes smoother All right, back at it again with the white. Fine. I'll use a ratchet on that one. You didn't think I was going to play fair, did you? <laughs> Alright, the next thing we're going to do is going to require you to be a little bit of a man. We're going to actually grab this thing and get it off and not let it slam to the floor. So... Usually you can just kind of get the 40 years of gunk freed up right there. And we're just going to ease it down. There's the axle shaft that's connected to that tire. So we had to slide it out of there to get it out of these axle carriers right here. I've got my Rear diff up on the workbench here, which as you can tell is a huge mess. So I'm just going to see if I can give this the old snap magic right here. What is that? Yeah, I'm okay with it. Now that we've got the workbench all cleaned up, we're just going to pull the diff over here into the lot. And I'm going to move the gamma in a little bit so we can see what's going on. What we're going to do is we're going to weld this spider to the carrier. We're going to get in there and weld the back spider to the carrier and then we're going to weld these two uh, top and bottom ones to the carrier and the last thing we're going to do is weld all four of the spider teeth together we're going to do that and then we're going to spin this differential around and do the exact same thing on the back side basically trying to get as strong as we possibly can uh, which on this truck shouldn't be an issue because you know, I'm running a little bitty stretch tires and old truck don't weigh maybe 2,500 pounds. So it's not going to be uh, just that big a deal. The first step is going to be to get some brake parts cleaned though. Clean all this grease off here so we can weld it up and uh, go from there. All right, so this next thing I'm going to do is something that I've never seen done, but it makes sense in my mind. I'm just going to take tin foil and try to stuff it in here behind the carrier. And I'm also going to try to come around the outside of this ring gear as best as I can. And that's basically just to kind of help deflect some of the BBs. Uh, there's going to be some good everywhere, but I'm going to try my best to only have open the area that I'm going to weld to try to... Um, prevent any weld spatter from getting back in here and these bearings. And like I said, this may or may not actually help anything, but when you look in there, you can kind of tell really the only areas I have open is right here where I'm going to be welding at. The next thing to do is just to get the welder out and uh, get it set up and get, get started on it.
And then to just get started with it, with on this, I'm just gonna go ahead and tack these, all the places I'm gonna be welding, I'm just gonna go ahead and tack them in there. Uh, and then just kind of get a good look at it. Do as I say, not as I do. Wear some proper safety gear. I mean, don't be welding out here in tennis shoes, shorts, and a cutoff shirt. Alright, it's looking like everything's going to go good with this, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut the camera off, move it back, get a little bit more comfortable. One thing when I'm welding, you notice I've got this thing laying flat, right? I don't got it stood up on its end with this pointing down towards the ground because, you know, all that, that would make it a lot easier to see in there and just weld right away, not have to be crouched down underneath it like this. That's going to allow all those BBs and welding splatter just to drop right back in against the pinion. So my hope with this is that they won't make it all the way back to the pinion and I'll be able to easily just turn this thing up and clean it out uh, real nice before I go to turn it and do the other side. But I'm going to go ahead and finish welding this up and I'll check back with you. Alright, just got this thing fully welded up. Uh, before we take a, a look at it too close, I'm going to go ahead and start getting this cleaned up. It's a pretty boring process. Uh, basically... I don't know if you'll be able to tell much, but there's a ton of little BBs all in here, just like welding splatter. No, that's a side effect of using that flux core wire. You can lay down some, you know, welds with it, but for the most part, it's just going to be a ton of splatter with it. Uh, the way I'm going to clean this up is I'm going to use a variety of uh, chipping hammer, you know, screwdriver. I got this little spatula, wire brush, more brake part cleaner. And basically, all these little BBs and splatter that's in here, we got to eliminate. Because uh, you may be tempted to say, well, you know, screw it. I'm just going to be lazy and leave it in there. But what will happen is, at the most inconvenient time possible, one of those will fall off and go straight back in here into your pinion gear. And it will just destroy your pinion and it's going to leave you stranded. So... I would advise you to spend as much time needed. Don't be lazy about it. Don't rush it too much. Just get all these out here you can. Uh, another thing that's really helpful is if you got some compressed air available, you just kind of blast it out of there as you clean. Uh, you know, as you pick a few of them off, blast it, pick a few of them off, blast it, and then actually spin your, um, you know, you can spin your, well, I'm not going to be able to do it one-handed, but spin your uh, pinion gear and rotate this over to the other side and do the same thing. All of it's got to be clean and cleaned up. All this splatter's got to be done. So I'm going to set you up on laps and uh, just get after that, and I'll check back with you whenever I get done. All right, so how'd we do? Not not bad, not great really. Uh, you can tell I was definitely using a crappy little 110 wire welder, but the base the basis of it's the same. Uh, you're gonna wanna weld right here, weld this spider gear to this case. You gonna wanna weld across here, weld this spider gear to the case. I even went and welded right here between the pin and the spider gear and on the back side in there uh, it's really hard to see but there's a there's a weld that goes around right there and then on the bottom right here i got a weld that comes across here welding the spider gear to the case then another weld right here welding the pin to the spider gear same premises on the other side too hard to show that one-handed um when you're cleaning this thing you want to make sure you get every little BB off of this as you can. Oh. This next part's going to be a whole lot of knot fight. Now I'm trying to lift this bad boy, put it in there.
I'm sure as you could see, I had already cleaned my gasket surface. Put some gasket maker on there. The thing I am going to do, because I have to go to the store anyways, is I'm going to put all these nuts on here. And I'm going to run them down so that they're just barely making contact with the... Uh, just run them down so that they're barely snugging up on that. And I'm going to let that gasket maker sit up while I run to the store and get some gear oil for this. Alright, now, uh, now that it's had a little time to set up, I'm going to go ahead and give this thing a few ugga duggas and a crisscross pattern. Uh, I'm just going to kind of work my way around opposite side one at a time here and uh, tighten all these things down. All right, now we're going to go ahead and hook our drive shaft back up. Try not to let it bust you in the face. <clears throat> Alright, I've got you looking at this from the inside. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and install our axle back into the rear end. We got to line these four bolts up with these four on this flange. We also got to twist the tire slightly to get the splines to engage on the rear end. So after we do that, we'll just go ahead and install our install our washers and nuts back on all four of these and torque them down. And, um, and then we'll be pretty much finished. I will say that there's a O-ring in here. There's your seal between your axle or between your axle and the axle housing. That O-ring can come off of there and get twisted in there so you might want to kind of just take note to clean that guy up and make sure it's not it's in there properly and it's not twisted before you go and install this all right and after you get those four done don't forget to obviously hook back up your brake line right here and like any time you remove a brake line you always got to go back and bleed the brakes i'm gonna not film that all right so this is partially optional unless i'm draining a little fluid right here what i done was i uh cleaned my magnetic drain plug i filled it up with some atf and a little bit of gear oil just some old junky oil i had laying around and i rolled it over by hand for probably i mean probably a solid five minutes of just turning it over backwards forwards backwards forwards by hand so i was doing it by hand so i could feel if there's anything got into it but it did uh looking at my drain plug it did show a couple little bb's there that we missed during cleanup so i'm glad i did it just to give me a little peace of mind but what i'm gonna do now is uh i got all that old oil drained out of it nearly i'm gonna go ahead and clean this guy back up and then i'm just gonna Pump it full of some decent gear oil here and uh, slap a plug back in it and be good to go. When you fill these, you can uh, do it one of two ways. Uh, you can, if you got room like I do, you can actually just take the, get a bottle with a squirt top and just squirt it down in there like that. And that actually works fine because I got plenty of room up here. If you don't, for some reason, I have plenty of room. You gotta use the old uh, shampoo pump there. Basically, all it is. I bought one back when I had a boat, but it actually turns out you could probably just pour your oil in a shampoo bottle that's been cleaned out good and be just as good. 
But um, anyways, I'm about to slap this mat together, pour some oil in it, and be good to go. And there's that magnetic drain plug. Now that we've got it all cleaned up, got all the metal off the end, I did go ahead and throw a new copper washer on there. Before I throw this in here, I'm just going to to clean it up just a smidge and then we're just gonna go ahead and throw a drain plug back in it you want to tighten that thing up good enough that it's not going to leak but not so tight that you strip it and next we're going to take off this fill plug When you fill this, you want to fill it until it runs out of this. It's going to be about two and a half quarts from best I can tell. And then just install your fill plug. Snug it down. And then you're ready to lay some number 11s. We're going to give this thing a, a good test rip before I post this video to make sure we, we did it right. God, I hope I remember to time lapse this. Get out of here. I kept setting my workbench on fire. Maybe I should have found the hole before I started to put it. Just as a side note, don't forget to breed your rear brake. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Mm -hmm. 